Hello everybody, um, today is time for another video, uh, I'm gonna tie the quilled eagle um, but before we go into that I, I'm gonna talk a bit about material options so uh, to be honest uh, we don't use eagle, come on uh, so there is um, a few alternatives uh, the first one is uh, turkey marabou but make sure to find a decent length of it normally it's huge so you need to find those smaller feathers and for God's sake if you use normal uh, marabou split it in the middle so you use half of the materials otherwise it's just gonna look like a bunch of fluff yeah, I don't know the English word for it but you know Second alternative, Capricalia. Um, it's a, a cousin to the turkey, smaller one. A lovely bird, a lovely bird. So if you know any hunter, if you hunt yourself, living up north, um, Sweden, Finland, yeah, uh, Norway, Canada, uh, Alaska, most likely. And then you can find this lovely feather, as you see. It's really, really nice. Uh, I'm gonna use this one today uh, and tie with because uh, I don't really like the, the normal marabou. It's uh, colored and this is natural, uh, the normal color, uh, nothing extra. So that's why I like it and I like that it, it's white in the, in the tops. So basically that's it, let's begin. So let's begin. So uh, I'm gonna tie this one a little bit different uh, since the pattern states uh, quill, yellow quill as a body, except uh, the orange uh, seal fur uh, in the end. Uh, I don't have any yellow quills, so I'm gonna go with yellow silk instead. Sorry for that. So tinsel. Uh, extra small oval tinsel so just tying it in Three turns. I think that's sufficient. I go with quite a large hook uh, just for instruction purposes, and so I would tie on it like a trio. No, it's a six o. Go. Thanks there. Then time for some silk. And as mentioned, yellow silk is a little yellow quill. almost the whole body except the, the front that is orange seal fur or should be in the original pattern yellow quill I'm 
gonna last a long time. So, gloves. It's another fun pattern I haven't tied it yet, uh, before, so going into my own cabinet. Got my dog here today, so let's see if he can behave. He loves the guard, so an unexpected noise, it's just gonna bark. So I'm just using the extra material to equal up the body. Or even, even up the body, sorry. again it's time for the tail so what I'm doing is I'm building up a bit of foundation here otherwise it's gonna be a huge gap between where I'm tying and the silk making your tail pointing upwards more than you want something like that Thanks. So tail time. way too much upwards. I'm just shaping it a bit. There we go. And a little bit more.
a little bit until I'm satisfied. So, cutting the leftovers. Then we need to have a lot of uh, fun stuff on it. So, two strands of peacock, swords. So, I got the two strands from each side. First, I'm gonna wax the thread as always. Going backwards with the thread until I'm where the silk is. And now it's time for the swords. Then we have the next step, which are cluster um, and ibis. This is it's a video flyer. I don't use ibis. Uh, I took a different bird instead. So I'm just gonna pair them up. bit longer This pattern in uh, the butt black hair, ostrich hair. So I'm gonna tie that in as well. Well, wax thread. Waxing a bit black wax just to prepare uh, for tying in the hurl. So 
So position I'm just securing it with a few turns of with the thread there we are that would be sufficient tying it off cutting it off sorry. So on this fly it's only silver tinsel flat. Actually it's open. So let's take a large one. Nicer. Maybe I do that. So, start with the oval tinsel then. Just removing a bit of the, the tinsel so it's easier to tie in. There we are. Just gonna show you guys. So I stripped a bit of the tinsel, exposing what's inside, and it's easier to tie it in. So I'm just gonna wax the thread. Here is the starting point. Moving the tinsel away so it's easier to work. Two tinsel. So 
So already I'm changing the pattern. But yeah, you will get the overview in there. I'm gonna post the pattern in the description. I think on this large hook it would look much nicer with two tinsel instead of one. And normally it should be this big size hook. So adding a flat tinsel as well. We need to build a bit of body uh, due to the fact that uh, I want to have a bit more volume and even out since now it's a bit thicker in the end than in the middle and in and the front. So I'm gonna get some silk for that. Also grab the silk fur. Oh, uh, sorry, <laughs> seal fur. Let's start with this one. Just gonna even out a little bit, not too much. In the front I don't really need to think about since we have the seal fur there. And for this one I don't use gloves because now it's not about protecting, protecting the shine, it's just to add a bit of volume and even out the hook. Getting there. in there that would be sufficient and we have a nicer shape to the body and let me see somewhere there. I'm gonna start here since we're gonna have the eagle somewhere in the middle of, uh, of the hook. So somewhere there. 
this stuff. The ego. I could even out a little bit more, to be honest. Give it even a better shape. So I'm gonna do that first. It's good to have a proper look to everything before moving forward. When tying videos you don't really have much time to look at things since you want to speed up. There we are. So going forward again. Now we have a better base to add this yellow silicone instead of the yellow quill, which I didn't have. But once again, going back to the middle, somewhere here, actually gonna go a bit further back. So I'm not gonna do exactly in the middle. So taking some proper Japanese silk. So just tying it in. Securing it. Let me see. That would be sufficient. So now I want to use the gloves since the yellow will be going to keep that nice shine. It's always good with the, if you find you know, odd colors that you never use normally, you can use them to even out the body. <clears throat> so this one is a bit twisted, so I'm just trying to untwist it a little bit. Would be easier if it was completely flat, which it's it's not. We can buy some more. I've changed to the other yellow I got. Since that one is flat, yeah, I will do that because I can still see the underlying silk between and that's not really fun to be honest so I'm unbinding this one going for the flat one I got it's a bit light but it will do Once I 
Two different ones, so I'm gonna see which one is. I'm gonna go with this one. My dog is snoring, that's a good sign. Removing one glove to make this one easier. Tying it in there. trying to keep the thread away as far as possible since I need all the room I, I can get to work with this silk then now it looks much better doing close wraps backwards and then I need to go forward again. Trying to get the silk to cover everything so you don't see too much of what's underneath. I'm gonna stop there. Secure the silk. Feel that there. There we are. So I can remove the gloves and then uh, work with the Capricelli uh, Marabou. So, and there we have that feather. So, the thick part I, I cut in half, as you see, the steam here. 
but we're gonna use it from the beginning. So just pulling the fibers backwards to find a nice tying tie-in point. The important thing now is not to pull too much when you're doing the hackle because it will break. So I'm getting that out of the way. bit more Japanese silk and then we go for orange silk fur. Gloves again. Again, time for that seal fur. It stays orange. So let's add some orange. Anyway. 
So then it's tinsel time. So be prepared with your dubbing needle because uh, you're gonna need it. Let's start with the flat one first. Flat. So with tinsel. Concentrating there, you don't want to get anything, any of these stuck. It was just stuck in the seam, in the fur. That's okay. Securing. Removing that one, a few wraps. Time for the oval silver tinsel. Repeat the same process to going after the flat one. I'm gonna try to be careful to really follow it accordingly. Yes, it doesn't really look that good. Sometimes I'm sloppy with that, I noticed in my own videos. check there. Need to follow the tinsel properly. Spend some more time this on this fly, just making sure it looks good. So let's have a look.
Yes. Now it's even. And following the flat tinsel as it should. So now it's eagle substitute time very, very gently. So folding the feathers backwards and following the oval silver tinsel. So. Now we are in line. Just gentle brush. Don't pull all the hackle downwards. Come on, it doesn't look good. So, what we need here is a front hackle. As you see, even if I do a 6 0 hook, it's, it's close to being too long. You really need to find those small feathers to make it look good. And the pattern states Galena. Not sure if I'm gonna use that or if I go, go with the Capri Kelly front tackle as well. But yeah, I'm gonna follow that. Front tackle. So I don't want to have too long front tackle. Maybe this one is okay. Let me have a look. Just a few turns. Thread again. 
Let me out. So I'm just gonna tie in the front hackle and then we do that part. I'm gonna add some more bags so we can secure the front hackle properly. Gently pulling so wrap and pull. It's time to get the dog some food. Starting to look a bit crazy. start to see the progress of the fly and uh, let me start with the wing as soon as I left the dog upstairs so I had a short break uh, and grab some food so I'm ready to finish this fly so prepare the middle wing let's add that one to the fly immediately Oh, come on. Forgot to back the thread. So let's start with that one. As you see, the hook is really, really secure in this um, tang vise. Kind of like it. You can do whatever you want. So, so before setting in the wing, I just want to make room so I don't have too much hackle in the way. But still, I don't want to pull down all the hackle. Makes it look uh, strange, according to me. So. Tackle with the thread either. 
keep it gentle really happy yet with the placement of the wing now it's in the middle I took them a little bit not really bend it but force it to the middle Just moving the fibers away. Okay. So we want to give room for the DC next to the wing. I'm just gonna wet the uh, little bit just to make sure it doesn't get stuck in the thread there. So, Banyard's varnish clear. I'm just gonna add a little bit of varnish before I start to look for a decent length Yeezy. It's gonna be somewhere here. And the varnish will work together with the wax and melt around. So it will stay in place. Time to continue with the GC that I prepared. I have a very long, very big hook, it's 6.0, so I need to take quite a quite long easy to make this work. So do one side at a time. Starting with this one. Tying it in accordingly. Sides attached, everything centered. Looks good. Time for varnish. Then another pair of GC. It should be sides, but since I have this wing that's going on top of it, I'm gonna add the sides before uh, just to make sure they're not sitting outside. But thinking out loud, I will add the sides after sticking with the pattern. So then I can do the wing now and then add easy on the sides as it should be. So, 
just pairing the wing together. Make sure we have the equal length. But to be honest, I want to get rid of these before. And so I'm going to varnish and then cut off the yeast so I can easily put the wing on top and measure it in. Just gonna fiddle a little bit. And there we have the wing. Just one fiber there I'm not friend with. So there we are. So just gonna wax the thread, then uh, do some varnish, cut the leftovers, then it's time for the topping. Funny thing, I almost uh, forgot uh, the GC on the sides. Uh, <laughs> that would be hilarious. So, waxing the thread. Um, I find a nice topping I'm gonna use, you see you guys know. So, waxing the thread. Do GC on my side first. Wing to align as it should. Why do I always play around? Varnish there. Just a bit, a bit on my side. There we go. So it's finally time to set the uh, topping. Uh, almost set the tail, but that's not correct. So I got one here. So let's see if that one. Yeah. 
will do. So first of all, as always, waxing the thread. Almost there. Oh, baby, I love your madness. It's so incredibly beautiful. Oh, you shine like gold. So selfless. There we are. First, some more bags, a few more wraps of thread again. Bornish. Picture time. But let's start with the wraps. That would be sufficient. Some more down force on it. So, adding a few wraps up here. And there it is. So, just gonna varnish the head and then the fly is ready. So, that's how you do the, the Quilled Eagle, a uh, nice pattern, I like it. Uh, I'm gonna tie a few more, uh, not doing a video of course, but for myself, uh, for fishing, smaller sizes. Um, I hope you liked the video, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button so you don't uh, miss out on my coming videos. And that's everything for today, take care out there and see you soon, bye. Japan